there's only a handful of birds and maybe uh, one whale species that has a longer migration than humpbacks. So during the course of its life, a, a Tongan humpback will effectively swim a distance to the moon and back. The humpback whales come up here because of the incredible productivity. They dine on a lot of different types of food, ranging from the small krill, the small shrimp-like crustaceans, up through small fishes, even salmon up here. Where there's an abundance of whales in the North Pacific that get all this wonderful food supplied to them by the ecosystem in Alaska and feed for six to seven months out of the year um, to sustain themselves for that entire year. If you compare the, sh the condition of animals that arrive early in the season with animals that leave late in the season, they are indeed um, a bag of bones and it's kind of hard to see how they can possibly have enough energy left to make that enormous migration. This population of humpbacks seems to be doing really well. You know, we think that the population has increased significantly. And at the end of every season, everybody would come together from all over the Pacific and we'd look at all our photographs and see who was turning up in different places. By matching which flukes are in the group and what calls we have, we can do voice print analysis on the sounds and we can do basically mugshot analysis. We trade our fluke keys like baseball cards with other researchers. So we've got to figure out who's here. Mostly it's you know, IDs that we uh, obtain ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that, that way you have the associated behavioral data, right? So, so you know, so every single one of those flukes you've identified and you have a name for them. Yes. So we see whales here that are very white, that is the white coloration that in the North Pacific is typically found only on the underside, that is on the belly. It actually spreads around all the way up the back to the dorsal fin. That's, you never see that in the, in the North Pacific. You don't see that extent of white coloration on the body. A diffi it's difficult to study animals that spend 90 to 95 percent of their time under the surface of the water. <laughs> you get this very tiny glimpse, you know, of their behavior. We have managed to attach some satellite tags to some animals in the Pacific Islands. And when we download the information from the satellites, what we find is that these animals go on remarkably straight lines from one place to another to another and we only have a little window of opportunity when they're here. And if it's really windy or it's pouring with rain or we can't see, we don't get much data. So we only get a little snapshot of, of what's going on, but from it we can calculate the population. And so we can also estimate how much the population is growing. So we can look back to how many there were 20, 30, 40 years ago.